chronic epilepsy typically presents in the teenage years, typically starting somewhere around 15 to 17 years of age. And the first time the patient comes and sees the physician is because of a generalized tonic-clonic seizure. Looking at the CG over here, you are able to identify a well-developed posterior dominant alpha rhythm. Just recall that the EEG, the odd numbers record electrical activity from the left side of the brain, the even numbers record from the right side of the brain, and the electrodes that end with the letter Z are recording from the midline. We are also recording the ECG in this patient, and I will move on on the CG. These are eye blink artifacts. So this is eye blink artifact. This EEG is reactive to eye opening. So as the patient opens the eye, the alpha rhythm disappears, and as the patient closes the eye, the alpha rhythm reappears. So this is an EEG that is reactive to eye opening and eye closing. So when you describe the CG, you can say that the EEG demonstrated a well-developed posterior dominant alpha rhythm which was reactive to eye opening and closing. If we continue watching the CEG, you will also be able to appreciate that there is some muscle artifact over here, this fast frequency here, this is muscle artifact, and the fast frequency that overlays most of this record, this is beta frequency. So go back to the previous tutorial EG101, beta activity or beta frequency is frequency when the number of waves in one second exceed 13 waves per second. So the two green lines are separated by one second and if you have more than 13 waves in that one second you call it beta frequency. So this is an interesting EG as this person has what sounds like juvenile myoclonic epilepsy. As mentioned, patient typically present to the physician for the first time after a tonic-clonic seizure. And if you ask the patient and the family specifically with regards to myoclonic jerks, you will find that many patients have myoclonic jerks that precede a couple years before the actual tonic-clonic seizures. And patients never regarded those as seizures. So the typical myoclonic jerks present when a person has just woken up from sleep or patients who are sleep deprived or when exposed to strobe lights. Patients report that things flip out of their hands so if they're holding on to something those things may drop out of the hands of the patient. The EEG other than when the abnormality manifests appears quite normal. So you, in this case you see a well-developed posterior dominant alpha rhythm well regulated no asymmetry and no abnormality. So I will, th this is a swallowing artifact, this is a muscle artifact that spans all the electrodes, so this is a swallowing artifact. And let's move on, so I'll click on to the area of abnormality. And here you can see this is a generalized discharge, a mixture of spikes, these fast frequencies, these are spikes, and wave, so you call it a spike and a wave, but this is an irregular spike and wave discharge. If you have seen EEGs from patients with absence epilepsy, those are very well formed three to four second spike and wave discharges which appear very symmetric between the two hemispheres. Here these are more irregular and the frequency is a little faster in many patients with JME, which stands for Juvenile Myoclonic Epilepsy, the frequencies may range from 4 to 6 seconds. If you're looking at the video, in some instances you may not see any motor activity. In other instances you may see a brief jerk of the arm or leg that corresponds to this change in the EEG. Patients with JME often will report that the seizures occur early in the morning. Although seizures can occur at any time when a person takes, let's suppose a patient takes a nap and getting up from that nap in the afternoon, patients can also have myoclonic seizures and they can also have 
generalized tonic clonic seizures. So as a physician it's important that when somebody presents with a generalized tonic clonic seizure you try to identify whether this was part of the juvenile myoclonic epilepsy or not and it is called juvenile myoclonic epilepsy because myoclonus or brief quick jerking of the extremities is an essential component of this syndrome and it occurs in the juvenile age group that's why it's called juvenile and since these seizures occur unprovoked often unprovoked you call it juvenile myoclonic epilepsy seizures can be provoked with sleep deprivation seizures can be provoked with uh, strobe lights so here you see this another abnormality this is spike in wave discharges the frequency is a little higher so this is one wave and a spike another wave and a spike three four five so the frequency here is almost five to six uh, per second spike in wave discharges let's keep moving on So when this person was having the spike and wave discharges, we looked at the photic stimulation. There was not a whole lot change with this photic stimulation. You have to remember that approximately 15% of patients with generalized epilepsy are photosensitive, meaning you may see spike and wave when you expose them to strobe lights. As compared to 2% of patients with focal epilepsies, they are also photosensitive. Among the patients with generalized epilepsy, a specific syndrome that we are discussing right now, juvenile myoclonic epilepsy, has a high number of patients who are photosensitive. So approximately 35% of patients with JME will be photosensitive when exposed to a certain frequency of flashing lights. When I counsel these patients, I make sure that they understand the importance of watching their sleep because that is important and also avoiding strobe lights or flashing lights this over here you see almost a four second or three second one two three to four second run of generalized spike and wave discharges compare this last four seconds of the EG which appears very normal with this four second of EG if you are looking at the video, sometimes you may see a brief myoclonic jerk that corresponds with these spike and wave discharges. When it comes to driving, driving issues, and if you do an EG which shows long runs of spike and wave discharges, whether patient tells you about a seizure or not, you have to be careful making certain that the person does not lose awareness or consciousness. I will be very uncomfortable supporting driving in a patient who has long runs of spike and wave discharges on the EEG because what that means is the patient's ability to make uh, a decision at that time, let's suppose the person is driving and they have to make a spot decision about changing lanes and if they have a spike and wave discharge like this at that time there is a possibility that the patient may not be able to make an appropriate decision. So this is a very interesting EG. This is an EG in a patient with juvenile myoclonic epilepsy. Some of these, what you see here, these are just muscle artifacts. These are eye blink artifacts. ECG for the most part appears normal. Well, enjoy your uh, the rest of the day. I hope this is helpful and I will see you at another presentation. Thank you.